Let's learn how we can use type aliases and interfaces to make our code more readable. So far we've been using type annotations, but this is hard to read and not reusable. So a type alias is, as the name suggests, just an alias for a type. Just how we assign names to different types of people. <laughs> so let's start with a basic example. So we can say const Pokemon Pikachu. We can be explicit and let's say it's a string. But you can also use a type alias, which is defined by the type keyword. So you can say type Pokemon equals string, just like a variable. And we can say Pokemon and this is equivalent. So let's look at a more complex example. So for example, let's say we have a Pokemon object, which is going to be an array of objects. It's going to have an ID of one. We're going to have Pikachu inside. We're going to have a Pokemon type electric. So how would we type this out? So let's just look at it. We can say type Pokemon again equals. So what is this? It's an object in describing this to TypeScript. So we can say ID is going to be a number. We're just describing it to TypeScript again. Name string. And it also has a property Pokemon type. It's also string. So we use it same as before. We can say that this is a Pokemon. So we get nice auto completion, but here is a warning because it expects that this is an array. So if we hover over, it says type ID number, etc., which you can see is denoted by the array, is missing the following properties from type Pokemon. So we can specify that this is an array by using the bracket boys, and this is going to be happy. Another alternative is you can specify the brackets here, but I honestly prefer this approach because you get into some weird types grammar and depends how you use the types. So for example, this is really uh, an awkward example with Pokemon because it's plural and singular almost, but let's say something more obvious. Let's say you have a type banana and then you have multiple bananas, then you can simply use banana and just say, hey, this is an array of bananas. But if you create a type, for example, that's called bananas, then it's really awkward going backwards when you want a single type banana. So yeah, I always prefer to do this and then include the brackets at the end. But obviously it depends on you, right? Also don't forget that we get nice type inference. So for example, if you say Pokemon for each Pokemon, and then if you say console log Pokemon, if you hover over the Pokemon, we can see it, in, it infer the quote unquote singular Pokemon instead of being an array, right? So TypeScript is really awesome this way, how we can infer these types for us. So let's look at another example, how we can reuse the Pokemon type by using it as the argument and return type of the log Pokemon function. So we can create a type Pokemon, that's an array of strings or just a Pokemon name. And we can say function log Pokemon, and we can say the argument, just like this, Pokemon is an argument that saves the type Pokemon and it should also return a Pokemon. And TypeScript is already complaining because we aren't returning what it expects. So we can say if array is array, then we're going to return Pokemon map, Pokemon, and we're going to say Pokemon to uppercase. Again, because it knows this is a string, we can use string methods. And if we hover over it again, we get nice type inference. So yeah, so let's do another check. We can say if, type of Pokemon, it's a string, and we can just uppercase it. So we can say return Pokemon to uppercase. Otherwise we can just return, please enter a Pokemon. So let's add our console logs here. So you can say add log Pokemon. And let's add this array, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. Let's set other console logs. So you can say log Pokemon Pikachu. And then let's add an empty one. Say log Pokemon. And this is going to complain by TypeScript because let's just make it optional, right? So let's open the terminal and run it. So we can say again npx ts node. And we should get the expected output. And everything was great. So this is awesome. So let me just see, let's look at another example of functions and how to type those two with type aliases. So functions are just special objects in JavaScript, which is a roundabout way of saying we can type them as any other object. So let me just show you what this means. If we go to the console, we can say function log Pokemon, and then we can return, we can say log Pokemon, the function itself, or you can say this Pokemon. So we're going to add 
Pikachu as a Pokemon property. And then if you're in Chrome, you have to console Deer. So you list the properties on the object and then you're going to get the log Pokemon function, which has the Pokemon value on it. So this is really interesting, right? So let me just close this and let me show you in the next example how to type different function expressions using a type alias. So for example, let's create a log Pokemon function. So how do we type a function? So we say type and whatever we want as the name, right? So we say equals and then we need to just define a function. So write the function body and then what it returns, right? So we can say steps a Pokemon, which should be a string and it returns nothing. So we just say void and we can use this. So let's use a named function expression. So we can say const log Pokemon one. So we can use our type log Pokemon and then we can say it's a function log Pokemon. I'm just gonna say log Pokemon and then we can console log the Pokemon. Let's look at an anonymous function expression. So we can say const log Pokemon2, which is going to be the same type, right? Log Pokemon, and it's going to be function Pokemon. Just console log a Pokemon. And then let's look at an, an anonymous arrow function expression. Const log Pokemon3, same type. And then we can just say Pokemon and console log the Pokemon. And this is awesome. So this is really the only difference because you can only use a type alias on this type of functions, which is really uh, one downside of TypeScript because for example, you can have a regular function log Pokemon and there's really no way where you can stick this definition in of the function. So you really can't include it here at the end or as a return type, this can only work for anonymous functions like this. So that's why most people, if you see it in code like this, in a framework, they do this because they can type an entire function and just include the function like in this last example, log Pokemon free. But of course you can just type out the entire function. So for example, as I said, if you have log Pokemon, then you have to do this of course. So this is more verbose, but the alternative would be as I just showed you, for example, a function, but const log Pokemon. This would be really the alternative where you return void. And then this is a Pokemon. So you can also type it here. You can just use the type. And this is really the advantage of doing this. Yeah, actually, this is a real function, so we need to return something. So yeah, I hope that makes sense because that might be confusing to you. There's also other tricks. Uh, if you want this version to work, you can specify a variable something, then you can say log Pokemon, and then you can use the type here, log Pokemon. So this is also going to work, but it's kind of awkward, so it depends on what you want to do, right? So let's look at interfaces. So interfaces are another way to name an object type. So in this example, again, we're going to have the Pokemon. Let me just create this. This is going to be an array of objects. We have an ID name. Pikachu, and then we have a Pokemon type, electric, let's give it an ability, just copy this over, we're going to have Thunderbolt or whatever, and then we're going to give it a method, it's going to have an attack method, so we can console log it, we can say this name used this ability, and then we can say Pokemon for each Pokemon, we want to use its attack. So we can say Pokemon attack. So how do we type this? So we can use an interface and an interface is more appropriate to use on objects because as I said, you can think of type aliases as variables which hold other values and we're going to see what the difference is in a bit. But yeah, so we can just type the interface and again, you're just describing things to TypeScript. So this really isn't that bad. And this is like something you do most of the time in TypeScript. There's really nothing more complicated than this. You're like dealing with interfaces, maybe use a type alias and it's pretty breezy, right? Let's say that ID is optional, which is a number. Name could be a string, right? Then we have a Pokemon type, which is a string ability string and then we can type the function out so you can just say attack it's a void because it doesn't return anything and yeah that's it we can save it and we can get great type inference so if we hover over this and even here 
if you go over the Pokemon, you know this is a single Pokemon and it has all the properties here. So yeah, let's uh, run this code as we had previously. And then we can see the Pikachu used Thunderbolt. Watch out. <laughs> so yeah, so let's close this out. And if I continue here, so the big question everyone has is, should I use type aliases or interfaces? So let me just quote you from the TypeScript handbook. For the most part, you can choose based on personal preference and TypeScript will tell you if you need something to be the other kind of declaration. Too long didn't read the TypeScript documentation says, do whatever you want, <laughs> basically, and it really doesn't matter. You can pick one and if it doesn't work, just choose the other one. I use both when it makes sense. So I use interface, which is more appropriate for describing shapes of objects or using it on objects, right? And you can add new fields to an existing interface, but not to a type alias. So we haven't learned yet about intersections, but let me just show you the comparison. So the next example shows how using intersections, we can extend a type alias by combining the types Pokemon with the type electric into a new type. So let's look at that example. So again, let's say we have Pikachu, which is just an object ID one name Pikachu. And then we say Pokemon type is going to be electric. So let's give it a type electric that we're going to combine from the type Pokemon and type electric. But yeah, so we can say type Pokemon. Again, you can use an interface here, depends on you, but we're using a type because we can combine them together using intersections. So let's say that ID is going to be number and then name string. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but you can also use semicolons like this, but it's purely optional. I prefer it without, but it's not optional if you have it on a single line, so then you have to include it. So yeah, that's a really pro tip right there. Yeah, so for example, if we use it here, this is not enough because TypeScript is going to complain. So we can create a new type electric and you can imagine this is some existing type and you want to extend from it. So you can say, for example, type electric, and you can create a new type. So you can say Pokemon and Pokemon type electric just like that and you can even turn this into a type alias or whatever you want and now if we hover over it we can see that typescript is pleased and we can see our type so this is really awesome so in the case of interfaces we can use extends to extend them so we can let me just see you can say interface pokemon you can say that id is number name string again and then we can say interface electric extends Pokemon. So this looks very similar to classes if you're familiar with it. Pokemon type electric, and this should be happy. And that's awesome, but there's a caveat when using interfaces. So when using an interface, you should always keep in mind that you can use an existing interface, which could lead to some unexpected results. So for example, this interface Pokemon or whatever could exist globally in your code base. So let's look at an example where this can <laughs> bite you. So if you create an interface window, and if you're aware, window is a global object that exists in the browser window, right? So for example, let's create a regular window and then we can say style double hung. Let's see, casement type of windows, all the amazing windows owning. I never heard of these types of windows before, right? And then you like go on your merry way and then you say item is of type window. And you just want to create some beautiful windows. For example, let's give it the color white. And for the style, we want to say, and this is another awesome thing about TypeScript. Look at this awesome auto completion because it knows the type. So we can say double hung, but there's a problem. <laughs> if you look at the item, we're going to see a vomit of words. So type color, string style, blah, 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 is missing the following properties from type window. Client information, close custom elements, device pixel ratio, and 192 more. And you're like, what the heck are you talking about? So the type window is already declared in the global type definitions leap DOM DTS, types for the global window object. So for example, in your editor, uh, it might be control or alt for you. For me, if I hold down alt, I can hover over the type definition. And if I press down alt and click, it's going to open the global type definitions. So here are the local type definitions, but look at this, here is the lib DOM DTS. And we can see all the properties on the window. So here are some familiar suspects like inner height, inner width. So this is the conflict you need to be aware about when using interfaces.